what's going on guys welcome to part two of the machine shop footage so let's just cut to the clips the most important part of the head is the valves how they seat if they're straight or bent one bad valve can mess up your day with a constant misfire so here we are grinding our valves to perfection we make sure to remove any carbon deposits or corrosion These valves are reconditioned like new. Look at that shine. The heads were washed a second time for the ultimate clean, then air dried with an air nozzle. Next, a wire wheel was used to clean and remove any debris that was left behind. Every port, every crevice, and every hole. After wire wheeling the head, Wagner sprays a rough proofing coat to protect our head. It also gives it a clean look. Then we paint on some dye around the valve seats. This dye is used as a guide to let us know if the valve is seated perfectly. Now we place the head on a valve cutter machine. The purpose of this machine is to cut the valve seats to a precise measurement. This will ensure proper fitment of our valve. Next, we use a valve lapping tool. This tool helps resurface the mating surface of our valves as well as the valve seats. These valves control the intake and exhaust of the air and fuel mixture, which powers our pistons and excites our engine with power. Now we work on removing that pesky exhaust bolt that was broken off into our head. We use a small drill bit to help create a guide. Then we upgrade to a bigger bit this will give us the room needed for our insert. Now that the hole is wider, we can work on fitting our insert. You always have to be careful with what you are doing. One mistake and you can damage your head. Before the insert can go in, we have to tap the hole. Tapping creates threads in the newly created hole. Now we slowly and carefully insert our threaded insert and then we make sure that it is completely flush. Now we are ready to cut our head. Wagner sets the head on the cutting machine. Setting this machine is like building a puzzle piece. Before we cut our head, we decided to demonstrate how you would check for warpage. So here you would use a straight edge, followed by a feeler gauge. You would use the straight edge and check every angle as demonstrated. The feeler gauge should not be able to go through the straight edge. You can always check online for your readings. Finally, we can cut our head. We start off by cutting one thousandths at a time. We end up giving it four cuts for a total of four thousand. The gouge in the end of the head is caused by the mixing of coolants, which can degrade the materials from the aluminum. Another cause of that can also be a bad chassis ground, that can cause the coolant to become acidic. Now we carefully install our valve stem seals. Then we use some white lithium grease to install each one of our intake and exhaust valves. Now we lay on our springs and our top covers. Mm -hmm. 
We head back to our spring compressor machine and carefully install our keepers. Do not lose these or you're gonna have a bad day. We place our head on the bench and give it a nice wipe down. We head to the tub and squirt some fluid in the head. We did this to check for leaks. After about 2 minutes I did notice some fluid coming out, but I was assured that this was okay due to the fact that the valves open and close extremely fast, so I would not have any issues. Only time will tell. For safety, this device was installed as a guide to see if your engine overheated. When it heats up, the center will melt. Finally, our head is wrapped beautifully and my warranty paper is inserted. I am given a 6 month warranty from the date of the rebuild. Alrighty guys, thank you all for watching part 2 of the Machine Shop series, now stay tuned for part 3.